you mentioned pesticides and herbicides, whether it be conventional, which is typically going to have more of those on it, or organic if there's cross-contamination. Talk about what we can do to help bring that load down, whether it be washing in something specific or, or just using water. You can let us know what's best. And then talk about the impact of those on the microbiome if they get through. Yeah. Um, so let me talk about the impact first, right? So there's a lot of studies that show that Roundup, for example, and then that's the most prevalent uh, pesticide herbicide that's being used. So we'll, we'll focus on that a little bit. Um, Roundup, which the active ingredient is called glyphosate, uh, and glyphosate is an antimicrobial. To give people an understanding of, of how it works, um, it interferes with something called the shikimate pathway. The shikimate pathway is a way in which microbes, or in the case, in this case, plants, um, use so weeds, for example, uh, and insects and all that. That's they use this pathway to create aromatic uh, amino acids, which is an important part of metabolism and normal function. And so this compound interferes with that pathway, which means that the the weed or the insect can't function anymore, and it kills them off. And so. The, the premise around the safety of that compound was that, well, humans don't have the shikimate pathway, so it doesn't have an effect on us, right? And so that was the premise around the safety. Well, the problem is all our microbes in our gut have the shikimate pathway and, and require that in order to produce their aromatic amino acids and function in the right way. And so what we're starting to see is that although it's not toxic to the human cell, it is toxigenic and it is uh, a, a bactericide to the microbes in the gut, right? And, and it's, it's a bactericide or antibiotic in one of the worst ways because it actually selectively kills the good bacteria. There's lots of pathogens in the gut like Pseudomonas and, and uh, um, certain types of Clostridia um, and, and all that that have figured out ways around this this compound, so they're resistant to it. And, and your, lots of your lactic acid bacteria, your beneficial commensals, are very susceptible to it. So when you get exposure to it through the food system, what's happening is you're getting small doses every day of an antibiotic that specifically kills the beneficial bacteria, right? That is a perfect opportunity for the pathogens to overgrow and take over. Right. So, and so this becomes a, a, a definitive component of your ecosystem. Now, when, and what is the impact of that? Right. Um, we did a study with, uh, with King's College in London, uh, because we were concerned and we were interested to see what, what does it look like in a pediatric microbiome to get exposed to cereal level of glyphosate each day? Right, because we know kids eat cereals. Most many kids eat cereals every morning for for breakfast. Cereals, which come from you know oats and things like that, tend to have high levels of glyphosate, especially the oat-based cereals. The reason for that is uh, many uh, farms still use glyphosate as a desiccant to dry out the crops before harvesting. Right, it makes it easier to harvest the crop when they're dry, so they actually they coat the the fields with glyphosate in order to dry out the, the crops. And so then the oats that, that, are, that are derived from it tend to have very high levels of glyphosate. So then we said, okay, let's take what the levels of glyphosate that the EPA designates as safe, right? And expose a healthy pr uh, prime uh, pediatric microbiome to that over a three week period and see what changes, right? So we, we had three weeks of stabilization and control on that five-year-old's microbiome. Uh, and what, what we did, we didn't feed the five-year-old this, of course. We used a, a SHINE system, which is a simulated gastric system, which is an entire mechanical digestive tract that has a mucosa, and we inoculate it with the full microbiome, and we feed it like you would a normal human from the stomach all the way to the distal bowel, right? Uh, and we can dive in there and see what happens to the microbiome over time as we feed it different things. So what you do first is you take that child's microbiome through lots and lots of stool samples and you inoculate the entire system with the child's microbiome. You stabilize the microbiome over a three-week period by feeding it an ideal macromolecule-based uh, diet, meaning uh, ideal amount of protein, fiber, fats, and so on. So you stabilize the microbiome and this child's microbiome was super diverse, very healthy, high levels 
of keystone species, high levels of short chain fatty acids being produced, and it looked pristine, right? This child was vaginal born, was nursed uh, over a year, uh, naturally nursed, had never had a course of antibiotics, hadn't had a vaccine just yet, so it had a pristine microbiome. So we take this microbiome, we stabilize it, and then for the next three weeks, we feed it the normal stable food that maintained that healthy microbiome, but we added a uh, serial level of glyphosate to it. Now we did two studies. We did glyphosate, the active ingredient only, and then we did Roundup, which is the commercial formula that glyphosate is found in, right? And, and we did that for three weeks, and then we measured what changes occurred in the microbiome. And then we did the last three weeks where we tried to rescue the microbiome and recover it despite continuing to expose it to Roundup or glyphosate. Here's what we found. In three weeks of glyphosate exposure of just the active ingredient, there was, there was some damage to the microbiome, but not a lot, right? But the Roundup, version, the commercial version that has other acids and things added, was devastating to the microbiome in that three-week period. We saw a significant reduction in diversity. We saw a significant increase in pathobionts. We saw a re significant reduction in the production of short-chain fatty acids. We saw keystone species dropping. We started to see a high production of things like ammonia and branch-chain amino acids, which are very um, inflammatory. So basically, the, this pristine fibril microbiome within three weeks of exposure started to look like the microbiome of somebody with inflammatory bowel disease, right? And this is the quote-unquote safe level of exposure. Now, we started trying to rescue it by adding in spores and other things, and we started to see a repairing occurring, right? So then that also tells you what you can do about it. So I would say... Um, what you can do about the, the issue of being exposed to pesticides and herbicides is to choose organic as much as you can. You will still get some exposure, even through organic, but it will be less. And dose and frequency matters, right? So try to choose organic as much as you can. The other thing you, you could do is also try to grow some of your own produce, like we talked about earlier, right? Simple stuff, potatoes, cucumbers, you know, jalapenos, things like that. So growing some of your own so that you reduce exposure from those types of produce that you would normally buy. Um, the third thing is washing. Now, in some types of, of vegetables and all, washing the surface will take care of it, right? Vegetables with hard peels on them. So if you uh, look at like a cucumber or carrot that you have to peel, uh, the, the harder the outer surface, those surfaces tend to do a good job of keeping the glyphosate and those chemicals on the surface you wash those with water and you're typically okay. Um, some people suggest soaking many of these vegetables in things like apple cider vinegar. I don't see any harm in doing that. I haven't seen a study that shows that it does, that it pulls out the toxins, but I don't have any issue with doing that. We do that with some of our produce as well. So that's something you can do as well. Now, know that inevitably you're still going to get exposure to these herbicides and pesticides, especially the commercial version of Roundup. So you need to constantly be working on repairing your gut microbiome, which means the feeding, the fasting, the going out in the environment, taking the right probiotic. We, we, we tested in that study the spore probiotics, and we saw that the spores were able to start recovering the damaged microbiome despite continuing to expose it to the Roundup. Right. So that's something you can add in as well to try to minimize damage. You mentioned before the salmonella being picked up by the tomato and being within the flesh and you can't even see it. As you're sharing about peeling the vegetables of the pesticides and herbicides, do you have any idea of how much ends up like in the middle in the flesh? With the vegetables that have a hard outside coating or a pretty firm outside coating, the vast majority. Um, it's hard to say a number. Nobody's done a study on the number, but the vast majority ends up on the outside surface. Um, so if you wash the outside surface or you peel it to a certain degree, uh, I think you're doing better. We peel all our carrots. I would love to be able to eat the outside because, again, the outside part, uh, the very outside layer provides more fiber. Um, but, you know, if we're not growing the carrots ourselves, we know that it probably has some degree of pesticides and herbicides on it. So we peel it and uh, and then you boil it that can help as well. Um, you know, there are some vegetables that we do soak in um, apple cider vinegar, things that are like very leafy things, 
right? Uh, and the problem with leafy things is just there's so much surface area, right? So if you, if you buy like a whole head of cabbage, for example, right, there's so much surface area on there for the not only uh, the pesticides and herbicides, to sit, but even microbes, right, that may be harmful to you can sit there. So we do soak those as well. If you enjoyed that clip, you're going to want to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. Adding spores to a gut microbiome in three weeks increased the diversity of the gut microbiome by almost 25 to 30%. And it increased the growth of keystone species and it brought down pathogens. So the spores are like the police or the orchestrator.